So in section 12.2, we're going to be testing hypothesis for one population percentage or proportion. In section 12.1, we constructed confidence interval for one population proportion. So in this section, we're just going to continue on with our last of our inferential work. The null hypothesis of interest is that the population percentage is equal to some hypothesized percentage. And that's what P not represents over here so for example i may hypothesize that about 15 percent of students uh, default on their student loans or for example that 70 percent of students um, have balances in excess of a thousand dollars on their credit cards and so on and so forth now the assumptions that go with this work we're going to um, piggyback on the assumptions and the work that we did in section 12.1 remember we we spend extensively um, on the sampling distribution of p hat a point estimate of the population percentage so we're going to continue on with the theory that was in section 12.1 in that we're going to use the normal approximation to the sampling distribution of p hat in order to do our hypothesis test so we don't need to go through all the things within in section 12.1 we're going to go right to our formula in just a moment now a couple of assumptions we have here that we have simple random samples without a replacement and that the product n p naught and n times one minus p naught those two expressions are going to be at least five okay now the exact sampling distribution again of p hat assuming the null hypothesis is true is binomial but then because of the difficulty of computing binomial probabilities we just want to make it easier so we're going to sacrifice accuracy for ease in computation okay and for that reason we're going to use normal approximation that we did for the sampling distribution of p hat remember we used uh, the mauve laplace approximation so that's what we're going to do again therefore the sampling distribution of p hat assuming the null is true is going to be normal well approximately normal with a mean mu p hat equals p and the standard deviation is going to be this now and a little further down this lecture i'm going to show you uh, different expressions that we had for sigma p hat in section 12.1 we saw two different expressions for sigma p hat and this is the third expression we're seeing for sigma p hat i will i will elaborate on this in a few minutes but for now assuming the null is true which we always make that assumption this is the proposed sampling distribution of p hat this is the center of the distribution, that standard deviation of the distribution given by these parameters. Now, so here's where I want to elaborate on, on the three formula we had for sigma p hat. So in section 12.1, the original sampling distribution based on the Marvel Laplace was this. Okay, again, this is in section 12.1 the center of distribution by the way will not change in all three cases the center of the distribution is the same it's just the standard deviation is going to be different so this is what the theory says it should be now because we don't have uh we are not working directly with the population parameter p so we're going to use p hat right therefore when we talked about waltz confidence interval this is the formula we had so if you look at the formula again for sigma p hat both of these by the way come from section 12.1 okay look at the numerator here and the numerator here because when we actually collect data we're going to replace p with this point estimate p hat and then now in section 12.2 we're talking about the presumed assumption or the presumption that the distribution is going to be approximately normal and assuming the null hypothesis is true then uh, the sigma p hat the standard error 
or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is going to be this notice again the numerator is different so you see three different numerators under the radical the top the middle and the bottom so i just want to point that out because these can get confusing um, now in this section we're working with the bottom distribution so here's our test statistic it's going to be p hat minus the hypothesized value of the percentage divided by square root of hypothesized value of percentage times 1 minus the hypothesized value over n and this is what's in the book just to kind of show you what's in your book which is very similar to what we have and here's our test statistic and the alternative is going to be any one of the uh, the three alternatives we always worked with the two-tailed left tail right tail test of hypothesis okay and our decision here is going to be the standard decision with p-value we reject the null hypothesis if p-value is less than or equal to alpha and using critical value approach we reject if you fall into the rejection region again depending on uh, the type of alternative okay so let's take a look at this oops i went too far south okay let's take a look at this uh, exercise this is exercise number 67 that we're going to take a look at so in this exercise it reads the substance abuse and mental health services administration conducts surveys on drug use by type of drug and age group and the results are published in that cited uh, source according to the publication 13.6% of 18 to 25 year olds who are current users of marijuana or hashish in 2000. A recent poll of 1,283 randomly selected 18 to 25 year olds revealed that 205 currently use marijuana or hashish. At the 10% significance level, do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of 18 to 25 year olds who currently use marijuana or hashish has changed from the 2000 percentage of 13.6 percent okay so clearly our test in a hypothesis right about the percentage true right in here the percentage now 13.6 that's the percentage in year 2000 we're going to take that to be the hypothesized value now the question is asking if the data provides evidence to conclude the percentage has changed from so the alternative in this case because we want to know if it's changed the null is going to say it hasn't changed so complement of that would be it has changed the complement of equal sign is going to be not equal sign right so this is how i set up the hypothesis the rest of this information was given in the statement of the problem so hypothesized percentage is 13.6 the sample size was 1283 number of successes 205 here is successes if somebody uses those substances and 10 percent was the significance level okay and uh, so here i set up the hypothesis now next what i did is i want to find the critical values now remember the critical values are the val values that separate rejection from non-rejection region in order to find critical values we need to know the uh, alternative hypothesis and we need to know the size of our test okay which we do we do in both cases here we have both of those information so that allows me to set up my normal distribution this is a standard normal distribution so for critical value alpha is ten, uh, alpha is 10 percent right this right up here 10 percent significance level that's the size of our test we divide it by two because this is a two-tailed test and the z of 05 is 1.645 because it's two-tailed we're going to have two critical values so the critical values are plus or minus 1.645 next i calculated our test statistic 
<clears throat> and again for the test statistic you got to be careful because in the denominator here make sure you use the hypothesized value of the percentage now 1 minus p naught is going to be 1 minus 0.136 and that's how i got this 0.864 in the denominator uh and uh, <clears throat> oh, how did I get P hat? I'm not sure if I showed you that one. Sorry about that. This 0.1598. So for that, again, P hat is X over N. So what I did is I actually divided 205 by 1283. And that's how I got this number. This is going to be 0.1598. So that's, that's how I got that number in, in this numerator okay and then you work it through and this is what i got so the numerator looks like a gain of two percent a little over two percent in the users and the denominator turns out to be zero zero nine six this is sigma p hat an estimate of that estimate of the theoretical distribution okay and so 2.48 exceeds 1.645 therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis here that would be our decision in other words uh, the standardized distance from the hypothesized proportion from sample proportion is over two standard deviation which falls clearly into that rejection region so we're going to reject the null that is our decision. Now, if we reject the, we reject the null, we're going to side with the alternative. So our conclusion is going to be that the percentage has changed since since year 2000, and it seems like again it's actually gone up. The percentage of users has gone up by over two percentage. Now, if we calculate the p-value, the strength of the evidence against the null, here is this is what we're going to find. The p-value is two times, and the next step, I actually plug in this. Now, this z naught is the value of test statistic, which is 2.48. We need absolute value for two-tailed tests because our test statistic could be negative. And this way, I'm looking at always the right tail and then doubling that up by symmetry. So probability of z greater than 2.48 you can look up a z table and get this number or you can use a stat crunch i use the z table i got 0 0.0132 and there you go p value is less than 10 percent we arrive at the same decision and of course the same conclusion now remember p value gives us the actual probability of a type 1 error which was rejecting the true null right rejecting the null when in fact it's true so that probability is 0132, which means the strength of the evidence is very strong against the null. But since we're deciding everything based on a sample, which is partial information, there is a chance that we could be wrong. In fact, that's what p-value tells us. It gives us what are the chances you're making the wrong decision. Well, if the null is still true and the percentage really hasn't changed but our sample was selected and random by random act it just showed that it was um, greater than 13.6 percent there is 132 in 10,000 that's what 0 0.0132 means that's 132 ten thousands so there's 132 in 10,000 chance that the null hypothesis is true and we made the wrong decision when we said to reject it. Now, this is the run from stat crunch. Okay, and I'll, in a moment I'll, I'll show and uh, I'll go to stat crunch to show you how this is done. Um, so there you go. And again, the null hypothesis is that against the two tail alternative and here's x and this is n the sample percentage the standard error everything that we've got uh, up here all of these numbers that you see up here one way or another you see it in the output okay now and then here i have the distribution 
If the null hypothesis is true, this is the sampling distribution of p hat. The center of the distribution is what the hypothesized percentage is. And the standard error of it is 0 0.0096, which is exactly this number. So that 0 0.0096, this standard error, that's sigma p hat, assuming the null is true. So, um, and what the distribution shows is that our sample percentage of almost 16% is, you see how far away it is from the center? It's over two standard deviation, right? This is one, this is two deviation. Each deviation is almost 0 0.001. So it's over two standard deviation. It's 2.485 to be exact. And the area to the right turns out to be 013. So we have seen an unlikely event. Therefore, we're going to reject this null hypothesis. And of course, our conclusion is what we stated earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to StatCrunch and see how we can do this exercise in StatCrunch next. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up StatCrunch. There you go. So we're going to Stat. And then we're going to look at proportion stats. We're doing one sample with summary, just like in section 12.1. And then click on that. Number of successes is going to be, what, 205. That's what it was for this exercise. So here's 205. Oops, let me make sure I got that number right. That's 205. The number of observation is going to be 1,000. 283 and the percentage is 0 0.0.136 and the alternative was two-tailed so hit compute and there you go pretty simple right that's how we got uh, the numbers that were in my notebook so again here's our p-value and everything else that you've seen before and let me go back to my notebook and there you go same numbers and with that we are done with this lecture this will conclude section 12.2 for us